There is plenty to see out there in space. Our solar system contains a weird and wonderful collection of objects, planets, moons, and in the centre of it all, the blazing sun. The eight main planets are special because they are massive. Each one contains enough matter and creates strong enough gravity to pull itself into a spherical shape. Furthermore, their gravitational fields have allowed the planets to clear debris out of their orbits. They leave only empty space behind as they sweep around the sun. Some of that interplanetary debris consists of rocky bodies called asteroids. They orbit the sun just as the planets do, but they are much smaller than planets. As a result, asteroids struggle to pull themselves into spheres, and they leave litter behind. Astronomers have identified more than one million asteroids in our solar system, and they keep finding more. Some of these objects are found way out in the Kuiper belt, past the orbit of Neptune. Some of them sneakily follow the planets and are called Trojan asteroids. Some even take elliptical orbits that bring them close to Earth. Astronomers have to keep a very close eye on them. The majority, however, exist between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. This asteroid belt is the perfect place to visualize the scale of space. Perhaps one million objects are found here with a diameter of one kilometer or more. There should be even more objects that are smaller in size. However, the distances between them are vast, and you would see very little if you were to stand on one. Furthermore, the mass of all these asteroids adds up to just 3% of the mass of Earth's moon. Many times during the past, asteroids have collided and broken into pieces. We know this because they are covered in bowl-shaped impact craters. Quite a few pieces have landed on Earth as meteorites. By looking at these interplanetary travelers, we have learned what asteroids are made of. There are three general varieties, siliceous, metallic, and carbonaceous. Siliceous asteroids contain silicate minerals such as olivine and pyroxene, which are very common in Earth's crust and mantle. They are not so different from the rocky planets. In fact, they are concentrated in the inner asteroid belt, the part closest to the four rocky planets. This one is named Eros. It has been observed crossing the orbit of Mars and may pass by Earth in a few million years. Metallic asteroids are shiny and dense because they are mostly made of the metals iron and nickel. They resemble the cores of rocky planets, implying that billions of years ago, some protoplanets were formed and then destroyed by violent collisions. Studying enough metallic asteroids may reveal what those protoplanets were like before they were destroyed. Finally, carbonaceous asteroids are those bearing a significant amount of carbon. Elemental carbon is black like charcoal, so these objects are very dark and difficult to see. They are thought to be the most common variety, making up 75% of known asteroids. Many of them were assembled from collections of tiny beads of matter called chondrules, which are thought to represent the oldest solid material in the solar system. Aside from Ceres, a dwarf planet, the largest known asteroid is Vesta at 570 kilometers across. Although it never grew large enough to become a planet, Vesta is nonetheless a unique and fascinating place. It looks a bit like a hamburger because of its squashed shape and the ridges around its middle. These features were formed by impacts on its southern side, where two gigantic craters can be seen. Something struck with enough force to crumple Vesta's crust and launch jets of debris into space. We have samples of that debris in the form of meteorites, and they look much like volcanic rocks from Earth. Smaller asteroids tend to be shaped like potatoes. This one is called Itakawa, and this is Ryugu. Both of them have been the targets of groundbreaking missions to directly retrieve rock samples. The pieces we have on Earth did not land as meteorites, they were brought here by robotic probes. Scientists hope to do the same thing on Mars, to look for traces of life in Martian rocks. These asteroids are Didymos and Dimorphos, 
each just a few hundred meters across. They orbit around each other in near-Earth space. Dimorphos is the smaller one, so it's considered a moon of Didymos. We have a good idea of what it looks like, because in 2022, NASA crashed a probe into it. We come in peace indeed. The impact created a debris trail 10 kilometers long, and seems to have slowed down the asteroid slightly. Scientists will keep watching it to see if its orbit changes over time. The point of this experiment is to see if we can redirect asteroids away from Earth using available technology. As I said before, over 1 million asteroids are flying around the Sun, and more are discovered every day. They are mostly small, cold, and lonely bodies, but they have a lot to say about the history of our solar system. Violent collisions, the formation and breakup of protoplanets, the development of today's planets and moons, and maybe even the origin of life are recorded within them. This is why we should continue to study asteroids. They are far more than just potato-shaped rocks.